This video is an introduction to functions. So let's take a look at what we know about functions. A function f from set a to b, and notice how we denote that function, assigns each element of a to exactly one element of b. So every element of a, whoops, <laughs> every element of a must be mapped to some element of b. This would be considered a function. Uh, you might also hear of a function being called a mapping or a transformation, but mostly we just call them functions. And obviously it's important for us to know some of the terminology that we might see. So if we're talking about the image, the image, let's say we know that f of 1 equals b. And I know that because that is this line right here. 1 maps to b. So if the input is 1, the output is b. So then I can say that b is the image of 1 under f, which would, of course, be that 1 is the pre-image of b under f. But be careful, because notice 3 also maps to b. So I would have to say 1 and 3, or the set of 1 and 3 more specifically, 1, 3. We can also say, if we're dealing with the entire function instead of just one value or element of the set, I could say that the set of A, B, C is the image of F the function f. Whoops. Um, also, I, let's talk about the range. Again, this is the domain. A is the domain, the set of all x's. B is the codomain, the set of all possible y's. And notice it's not necessary um, for each element of the codomain to be mapped to from an element of the domain. So the range is the set of all images, so the, the outputs, um, that are mapped to from the first set. So in this case, the range would be those values a, b, and c, because these are all values that were mapped to from the domain of a. We might see functions represented in different ways throughout our study. One is as an explicit statement. An explicit statement just means that we are going to be told exactly which elements map to exactly which other elements in the codomain. And so this would be an explicit statement telling me that A maps to 1, B maps to 2, and C maps to 1. So that would be an explicit statement because there's no formula or function. It's just, here's what maps to this. In a formula, obviously, we're just going to have a normal formula. Uh, f of x equals x squared plus 1. We might also have a computer program. Um, more on that as we continue to study discrete mathematics. Or you might have a relation. So we talked briefly about relations, and we will get into them in much more detail later in this course. Um, but if I have a relation, and remember, this is telling me that I've got some ordered pairs, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 7, you know, 2, 6, etc. We could have a function. Um, if we only have ev one ordered pair for every element of A, which means this subset could be considered a function because I have not reused the x value of my ordered pair. Notice I did not include these two, which did reuse the 1 and the 2 from before. 
Here are a few questions for us to try just to make sure that we understand all of the terminology involved with functions. So first let's answer what is the domain of the function that maps x to y and the domain is the set x. We can see x represents a, b, c, d. The codomain would be set y which is all of the values in that codomain. The range would be only the values of 1 and 2, so the set of values containing 1 and 2. The pre-image of 2 says what value mapped to 2, and then we can see here that that would be D. And the images of A, which would be what does A map to, so the image or images of A, um, and that maps to 1. And F of D means what does D map to, and D maps to 2.